Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Indian School of Physics. Guys, this is Nitin here and today I have come up with a very amazing problem. It is one single problem and there are multiple concepts, more than 15 concepts are involved in this. Uh, in the first part of this video, I am taking a series of questions. In the upcoming ones, I will take a few more problems on this uh, due to time constraint. So it involves uh, concepts of mechanics, heat, optic, optics and modern physics. And by the way, it is an original problem. So here is the statement of uh, uh, this problem. A convex lens of focal length F and aperture D is placed in front of an isotropic point source of power P0 at a distance of F. There is an agent holding a glass slab of mass M and a specific heat S placed at uh, some distance from the lens as shown in the figure. Uh, the glass slab has absorption coefficient of a and reflection coefficient of r there is a plane mirror placed behind the slab and the transmitted light strikes the mirror and compresses a spring with the spring constant of k which is connected to the mirror the mirror is in equilibrium find number one find the effective reflection coefficient of the system uh, the rate at which temperature of block is increasing this block is basically the slab uh, how much force agent will apply to keep the slab in equilibrium energy is stored in the spring in equilibrium and if frequency of light emitted from the source is n then uh, what will be the photon flux in the beam emerging from the lens uh, fraction of energy of source incident on the mirror how shape of uh, wavefront changes as light rays pass through the lens so this is the first set of question there are many more uh, ideas in this problem so here is the diagram as you can see there is a point source and uh, the light rays uh, isotropic point source is given so light rays will start from here and it is placed at the focus so light rays are going to become parallel to the principal axis and a patch of uh, pi d square by 4 this aperture diameter is given so this much area will be receiving the light and some part will be reflected absorbed transmitted and the transmitted part will apply pressure on the mirror and the spring will get compressed and energy will be stored in the spring in that situation so let's break this problem into small small parts and uh, we will proceed and we'll try to answer all the questions uh, so this is how the situation will uh, look like since source is placed at a focus therefore light rays will become parallel to the principal axis and uh, the light rays take the shape of a cylindrical beam so after passing through this uh, uh, lens this beam becomes cylindrical all right and since it is placed at the focus light rays are becoming parallel to this so it becomes uh, a beam of uh, uniform intensity so we will do the calculations for it so i think now you must be getting the idea here and initially these wavefronts are spherical in shape and after passing through this uh, these wavefronts will become planar all right because it's a uh, cylindrical beam so uh, wavefronts are going to be perpendicular to the beam and here it's a point source so these wavefronts are going to be spherical in shape so this is wave optics part of uh, this problem we can have uh, I have written here before refraction from the lens shape of wavefronts was spherical uh, and after uh, refraction from the lens shape becomes uh, <clears throat> plane wavefronts. Now let's find out uh, intensity of cylindrical beam. Uh, so from here we can say energy reaching the lens per second we can use the solid angle concept because this source is of power P0 so energy is released in all possible direction. So the part of energy which is uh, reaching uh, to this uh, lens, I can write total power divided by total solid angle for any closed surface that is 4 pi times angle subtended by solid angle subtended by this uh, lens at the source. So we already know this, uh, the cos theta I can define as f divided by root of d square by 4 plus f square. So I can simply write this uh, solid angle corresponding to half angle of cone is going to be 2 pi 1 minus cos theta. So when I simplify, I know how much power is reaching, how much power is reaching uh, to this beam, uh, to this uh, lens and which uh, eventually passes through this uh, uh, cylindrical beam that is p naught by 2 1 minus cos theta and this is the energy per second so from here i can define the energy of cylindrical beam incident on the slab uh, i can write uh, this intensity i naught will become uh, power uh, which is reaching to the lens divided by pi d square by 4 
so i can write it as 4 pl by pi d square by 4 if i substitute the value uh, so this will become i naught is equal to 2p naught 1 minus cos theta pi d square so here onwards i am going to deal this intensity of cylindrical beam as i naught we know the value of it so now let's talk about reflection absorption transmission at the glass slab see here the beam is actually incident normally just for uh, uh, our convenience i have uh, taken at slight ang uh, some angle here so that i can uh, <clears throat> have a better idea or uh, i can explain you in a better way so you can uh, see at any surface absorption coefficient reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient that sum is going to be one we already know about this so what happens is when this beam comes i naught the part of this which will be reflected back will be reflect uh, reflection coefficient times uh, r naught so this is going to be i naught r one part will be absorbed and the part which will come outside is going to be i naught t now it is reflecting from the mirror so same intensity will be reflected back and again it will uh, undergo uh, reflection and refraction so these things keeps happening uh, at multiple times because uh, whatever light will uh, cross the slab will come back to the slab after reflection from the mirror so uh, here you can see uh, this i naught so this will become i naught r transmitted is i naught t it will come back as i naught t when it is reflecting back it is i naught t r and this will come back here and when it is reflecting it is i naught t r square this is how it keeps on happening i naught t r cube and let's say the slabs and mirrors are uh, of very large length so this is how this uh, series will form similarly uh, this is the transmitted part so i naught t has come it is incident on this so transmitted will become t times i naught t so i naught t square it will become for the next part i naught t r it will become i naught uh, t square r similarly for the next part it will become i naught t square r square this is how we will form the uh the series for this part so i can say total reflection which is happening from this uh, slab system slab plus mirror system uh, this is i not r plus i not t square plus i not t square r and uh, if we add till infinity uh, and if you take i not t square common it is forming a gp infinite gp so for us it is very easy to calculate a by one minus r is going to be the result for it so overall effective energy which is coming back or intensity which is uh, reflected back from uh, slab plus mirror system i can write as i not r plus i not t square times 1 by 1 minus r so from here i can define the effective reflection coefficient so total energy incident uh, intensity incident is i not and this is how uh, this is the reflected part so ir star divided by i not is going to be uh, reflection coefficient this is going to be the answer for uh, the reflection coefficient i'm not explaining here t value you can uh, you can substitute in terms of known quantity a and r uh, similarly here uh, you can see i can go for uh, temperature of uh, glass slab so one thing you must uh, understand temperature of glass slab is increasing due to the energy which is absorbed by this slab all right so let's find out how much intensity it is uh, absorbing so corresponding to this first one it is i not a corresponding to this it is i not ta corresponding to this i not tr a corresponding to this i not tr square uh, like this if we add we will get total absorbed intensity so uh, this is the term here and similarly again uh, infinite gp is forming when i simplify substitute the values i am getting energy absorbed or intensity absorbed uh, by the slab this is how we are going to proceed for temperature change because once we know energy we know the energy incident per second uh, also for uh, from the intensity now for block i can write block or slab i can write msd theta by dt it is nothing but uh, the energy absorbed by this slab per second so which is nothing but i a star pi d square so when i substitute this value of i d square here uh, sorry i a star uh, here i'm going to get uh, everything in terms of known quantity by the way this i naught is known to us so i'm not substituting here just let's have this uh, idea in mind uh, so this is the rate of change of temperature 
so when i substitute all these values i am going to get this as the answer here uh, which is d theta by dt is 2p 1 minus cos theta by ms times a times 1 plus 1 minus uh, a minus r by 1 minus r this is going to be the uh, rate at which temperature of slab is changing now let's find out uh, how much intensity is reaching the plane mirror how much intensity is reaching the plane mirror so all we need is just we will count this part this is the intensities which are reaching the plane mirror so if we add all these uh, terms here i am going to get i i am calling it as i star m i star m means for mirror so again a very nice gp will form so when i substitute the values here i am getting i not t times 1 minus r so if i substitute the value of t i know this intensity which is reaching the mirror so it's like a very standard case of uh, j physics you would have studied in your modern physics lectures and i have done a lot of modification in the radiation pressure part uh, so this radiation pressure uh, force uh, okay here we can answer one more thing fraction of total energy reaching the mirror so this is nothing but uh, the energy reaching uh, the mirror is i m star pi d square by 4 this is going to be the energy reaching per second that divided by energy generated by the source per second so uh, we can find out this ratio this is the fraction of total energy reaching the mirror this is going to be the answer for uh, that part here now force on the mirror is very very easy to calculate uh, for uh, a reflection part we write 2ia by c if you remember 100 percent reflection case at the mirror so instead of i it will become im and area of the beam that is pi d square by 4 so it will become 2 im by c pi d square by 4 when we simplify i'm going to get uh, im star pi d square by 2c now this force is going to compress the spring when it is compressing the spring i can say the energy stored in the spring is half k delta x square and if i multiply with the k in the numerator and k in the denominator i am getting k delta x is f mag uh, f mirror f mirror is k delta x so if i substitute that uh, value here i am getting fm square by 2k now i know the value of fm is uh, fm is uh, fm right it is im star pi d square by 2c all these terms are known to you when you substitute the value here the energy stored in the spring is also known to you now the last part uh, of this problem is how much force we will require uh, to apply on the slab to keep it stationary so you need to be very very careful uh, about this part uh, you can see here uh, i have drawn uh, some regions uh, the intensities which i am taking for this now if you take this the, the whatever intensity has incident on the surface same has left it so no net force will come due to these light rays but if you see this uh, this part carefully uh, the uh, the first uh, refraction and reflection if i take i not intensity is coming i not is i not r is going back and this is i not a is absorbed so corresponding to this part there is force of f1 similarly corresponding to this all these uh, which is leaving uh, due to them uh, force will be in uh, rightward direction and uh, we can find out the effective intensity of this part also similarly here guys uh, similarly here uh, if you see the remaining part of this this is absorbed by the light rays coming from uh, from the right side so it will apply a force of f3 in rightward direction and that will be corresponding to this much intensity corresponding to this it is zero so it becomes very easy for us f agent will become uh, f1 plus f2 minus f3 so f1 plus f2 minus f3 now f1 is very simple due to this part it is uh, reflecting back and due to this part it is absorbing for reflecting double uh, will be the force absorption it will be same force so you can see here for reflection double and absorption uh, one single one and this is going to be the answer for uh, f1 similarly f2 if i write f2 is corresponding to this i have calculated this sum earlier so i am using that value directly uh, and that comes as uh, i not t square by 1 minus r times c and uh, this is like leaving the surface so uh, times pi d square by 4c pi d square by uh, 
pi d square by 4 also will come because we are writing the area here. In all cases, this uh, beam area is uh, 4. So I should add this in uh, all places here. Now, similarly, uh, I can write this uh, F2 part that is I naught T square 1 minus R by C pi D square uh, uh, C I have included here. So here also I have included. So this C will not come. Okay. Uh, there is a minor mistake here. This C will not come. Similarly, uh, this C also will not come. And similarly here, this C also, okay, here I haven't taken. So this will come. Maybe I'll write uh, in the previous format. Okay. So this, now it's uh, correct. So guys, you can see here, uh, when I calculate uh, the total intensities of this part, I am getting F2. Similarly for F3, I have to add these intensities, which I have done in earlier. And that term comes as uh, I naught T A by one minus R uh, divided by C uh, pi D square by four. So these are going to be the answer for F1, F2, F3. And you can find out the agent force required to hold the uh, slab stationary. This is uh, all guys. I hope you have enjoyed this problem and there is a lot of learning. This is like mixing of so many concepts here. It is uh, one problem and uh, complete revision of some uh, conceptual topics of uh, physics. So if you have enjoyed this uh, problem, please leave a like, share this problem with others. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. Thanks for watching this. I'll be coming up with part two very soon.